Oh. Hi guys, today in this episode we will continue the work around the Roland MC909 synth engine. So now is the time to spend a bit more time in the Roland MC909 editor. What other stuffs you need to connect the Roland MC909? Nothing fancy, you just need a MIDI I.O. at least with one input and one output port. After when you install the software you have to check few things about the MIDI settings in the software. Because this can cause a lot of drama. <laughs> this software has an option to operate your MIDI out port on your computer as a MIDI through output. And also in the Roland MC909 you can set up your MIDI output port as a MIDI through port. So everything which is came to the MIDI input of the Roland MC909 is immediately passed to the output port. So what this can cause in this setup? If in your Roland MC909 you didn't switch off the MIDI through option on a MIDI output port, then this can cause a freaking fast uh, loop and data signal between your computer and between your uh, groove box and actually it's it's so weird then how the MC909 will start to operate. So what you have to check first is about the MIDI through port of your MIDI interface. So here you have must to switch off the MIDI through function and also here you have to press the menu, okay? And then inside in a MIDI utility, soft through, this must be off. These two options must be off also. So uh, that's all the preparation between the software and between your MC909. And there is other really important thing here is this device ID. If you have more Roland uh, groove boxes and uh, drum machines or whatever, each of them they have the uh, specific uh, SysX ID. Now address header for the really special Roland SysX messages which device is the target. So this one you have to check it. In uh, default this is set to the 17 so from the main screen you have to press the menu, okay, and then go again into the MIDI if you are not there. And then check this label here which is the MIDI RX settings. And here you can see is the second field. So this one must be the same like what you have in your software. So this is how it looks uh, at the moment. So our first uh, part is some kind of organ. So to find this uh, specific patch in a Roland MC909, it's much more easier to do in a software than uh, jiggling uh, here in the built-in menus of the MC909. Menus, submenus and go between presets and banks and then... no. Uh, in a software it's much more easier. You have to open this uh, drop-down list and then you can load the, the specific organ tone what you are looking for. You select the other organ, then it's done. So now you can see here the list of the instruments as a part in your pattern or in your song. Ah, one more thing, really important and you can get really crazy. Uh, make sure your selected part on the MC909 is the same like what you have here. Last time I did a really big mistake, so I, I accidentally I pressed the, the, the second part on the MC909, I played on it, I changed a lot of settings around the patch and I didn't realize why <laughs> nothing is working. So I unplugged all the cable, I restarted the computer and then I realized oh I'm so stupid because I worked on a second part on the groove box. So, this must be the same. Okay, to edit the patch you have to press this little LED something in the software and then you will get this main uh, patch edit window. Now in this episode we will play around this general tab. So if you open the general tab you will see here plenty of plenty of options. So here in the first section you just have the name of the patch. Of course you have an option 
to rename your patch in your sequence. To do this, um, I don't know why Roland did that, but if you click here, nothing will happen. So you must click to here into this very small triangle button. I don't know what is this. So here we can add the other kind of name. What kind of organ is this? <laughs> YouTube organ. Okay. Ta -da -da. And then now we have this YouTube organ. The first pot meter here is the same like the gain pot meter on your mixer. This is a really important uh, setting here and this one can cause a lot of problem later on when you try to mix down your song in a Roland MC909 and you try to do a mastering here inside in the groove box. Why it's important? The organ songs are very very good excellent example about the gain structure of your mixing. So the organ sounds, they containing a lot of load harmonics. Almost all the organ sound, it's much more powerful than compared to, for example, to some kind of guitar. Uh, let me show you this really big difference. So now here we have this uh, gain level Okay, on a maximum, which is 127. Let me play now the organ sound. Okay, and then on a fourth part, we have the synthesizer sound. You feel the difference, no? So the two gain is on a maximum, on a top, 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 but somehow the organ is much more powerful, much more massive. So here, this is the first place where you have to build up the gain structure of the mixing inside the Roland MC909. Yeah, really, really important. Because later on, this can cause a lot of problem. Let me explain to you what kind of problems you can get from, from it. Later on, if you set your faders and you try to do a mixing, okay, here on the faders, to compensate the really big heavy sound of the organ, you must to press down this fader to almost to the bottom, let's say around 20%. This is your first fader position, what will decide how you build up your whole complete mix. So if you want something more than this first organ song, uh, not a big drama, okay, because you will still have a lot of play uh, ground in an export meter. But if you want to make something much more softer, much more quieter sound, then your option, it's only, let's say, from the half position of your fader to the, to the zero. So then, even, even with the smallest touches in a fader position, you completely can screw up your mix. So if you build up your gain structure before you before you touch even one fader, then you can be sure later on when you do a mixing with the faders, you will get exactly everything how you want. Don't miss this first pot meter in a general tab. So I will leave this one somewhere not on a maximum, make sure we will get some kind of headroom, let's say about something like this. So now I have a possibility to push this up to let's say to 80% and I will still not get something really, really, really loud even if I press the, the pads really hardly. Okay, so this is some kind of moderated settings. The next one is the tuning options. This one, it's a really handy tool to, to make really, really crazy synthesizer sounds if you're dealing with techno or with house music or with something, something like this. In the past, I used these uh, tune options a lot to create this really big and beefy and heavy and wide and crazy uh, uh, background scene sounds or carpets, whatever. So let me explain to you why this uh, tuning options here, it's a really, really handy tool. The Roland MC909 has a lot, a lot of really good sounding uh, synthesizer sound and patches and settings, whatever. But 
many of them, it's already multi-sampled and uh, uh, not uh, monophonic synthesizer sound. So then when you try to play with the unison mode, so engage more oscillator with the same waveform, okay? Then you easily can run out from the free uh, possibilities and spaces around the unison mode and you will never ever create this really big and beefy, absolutely Roland sounding, heavy, fat, unison synthesizer sound. So how the tuning options here can help you a lot. So let me explain to you the trick. You have to load the same patch, let's say into three or four uh, part in your sequence. Then what you can do, you go one by one and you detune the parts by, let's say with uh, one cent here and one cent uh, there and uh, five cent there and five cent there. Then in your sequence, you can copy the notes from one part to the next one and to the next one and to the next one or you can combine them together by uh, midi tricks to make sure when the the first get a note the next three part is also will get the same note so even in your DAW system or with the midi merger or midi splitter whatever so then what will happen each of your synthesizer which which are the same, okay? So from the same family, with the same settings, with the same filter setting, everything is the same, absolutely matching, okay? But because they will get detuned by fractions and then you apply the unison, okay, <laughs> on them, I'm telling you, you can get from the MC909 the most heaviest, most fattest, a really big and beefy synthesizer sound. You must to try it to to play around with this uh, uh, tuning option here. So what kind of tuning options we get here? Half notes, something like this. Yeah, this is half notes, but the next one it's a it's a kind of super fine. Okay, the next one is the pitch band range. Hmm, what is this for? There is many uh, natural instruments in a world and in a universe where you cannot bend down, okay? It's mostly blow instruments or wind uh, kind of instruments, flutes, uh, pans, whatever. So what can be the issue if you don't limit your pitch band wheel, how it's operating with your sound? You easily can create absolutely unnaturalistic, absolutely harsh kind of playing. So then this will uh, create this really eh, absolutely plasticky kind of uh, play style. And almost everybody immediately will recognize, oh, this is really kind of cheap sounding synthesizer here on my wedding party, what's going on? So what you can do with this, you can configure the pitch band range part by part, one by one, instruments by instrument. Uh -huh. Big difference, eh? <laughs> really big difference. So then when you split it up your keyboard to different instruments, then what will happen if you play on a bass? Okay, let's uh, allow to the bass uh, five semitones up and five semitones down, and then you easily can create this really weird, uh, really a nice uh, sounding bass tones, but the middle section is some kind of pan flute or whatever. So this one you can limit down. So what you will get then, if you limit down the pitch band range to few semitones, okay, then you have much more bigger resolution to play with the pitch band wheel. And with a lot of practice, okay, you easily can play with the synthesized natural instruments like, I don't know, like the most professional uh, flute guy. Huh? So... <laughs> Actually, in this 
specific um, instrument, which is organ, eh, it should be zero, zero. <laughs> because I don't know who have a real organ in, in a church, but uh, as you know, it's really hard to bend, eh? so it's impossible. <laughs> the next one, priority lowest or last. Uh, what is this? So bleh, go back uh, for a minute to these polyphonic limitations. You know, guys, the Roland MC909 has a 64 voice polyphony limit. But we have here 16 part in every pattern or in every sequence or whatever. So what this limitation can cause? You easily can face with the biggest drama on a live section. <laughs> so if you play parallelly with your um, pattern, okay, in a live, and you don't play so hard with your monophonic synthesizer on the top of it, then easily again the system can decide, okay, your um, your uh, notes on the monophonic synth is not important because this is not the loudest part. What will be the loudest part? Probably kick drum, uh, bass synthesizers, loops, whatever. So <laughs> one of your notes will be choo, disappear or three or four or five in series. So what is these two options what we get from the Roland? The loudest is meaning the priority of the last uh, note which is important in a polyphony, so this must be keyed, is will be the loudest. So when this setting as uh, the priority first on the loudest can help you and you play really with the loudest instrument in live or you have the loudest instrument recorded in your sequencer. So then what can happen if, for example, the, the system decide on one of the he hat okay, note, ah, this is not important because this is not the loudest part, then what will happen? Nothing. Because your main monophonic synthesizer, it will be still there and everybody will hear all the notes. So let's check what is the next one, which is the last one. The last one is much more sophisticated because in a sequencer everything is recorded and of course you play parallelly with your monophonic synth, okay, in a live act event. Then of course everything what you are doing for the sequencer and for the MC909 is the last. So when you press the note, this is the last. I'm telling you guys it's not easy to run out uh, from 64 <laughs> voice polyphony. And if you hit the 64 voice polyphony, you have to redesign your song and you have to rewrite the, the notes in the sequencer. The next one is the mono or poly switch here. I think uh, for you guys it's really clear what it's doing. In a mono, okay, settings, you just can play one note at a time, okay? You hear it, okay. In a poly mode, the synthesizer will ignite every pressed note parallelly. Okay, so this is the difference between the mono and the poly. To demonstrate the next settings, I must to switch to mono. But before that, we have to choose some kind of other instrument, which is much more simpler. Yeah. After you switch to mono, of course, you immediately get the option to play your instrument in legato mode. If you want to simulate uh, uh, a specific guitar playing method, which is called the hammering on and pulling off, uh, playing style, this is when you have to engage the legato mode. But if you are playing with a bass monophonic synthesizer sound, I highly recommend you to switch on the retrigger mode, because then you can be sure all the envelopes, uh, filter envelope, uh, amplification envelope, whatever, is, uh, which is time-based changes parallelly with your waveform, then this will be retrigger all the time, 
all the notes to the beginning of the waveform. This actually gives you four different types of playing style in a monophonic mode. In a Roland MC909, uh, there is a really uh, unique uh, combination of these two. If you are using a multiple waveforms with time delay. Later on, we will arrive to this point. Don't worry, in uh, episode 3 or episode 4, when you really can utilize these two options as an absolutely different uh, sounding playing style with your one instrument. And this, this is actually a very, very useful tool here. You just have to remember where is it. So this is in a general tab. I don't know where is it in the <laughs> MC909 menu. Somewhere, somewhere deep, somewhere high that I don't know. The next one is the portamento mode. The portamento mode in a word of synthesers is meaning your synthesizer engine will generate a continuously rising or falling pitch change between the two pressed notes. In the Roland MC909, of course, we get much more options than what you can find in other normal synthesizers. In many synthesizers, you just can switch on or off the portamento mode, or maybe you just can change the time period between uh, the, the lowest or the highest uh, pitch in a row. Okay, the first setting in a Roland MC909 with a portamento mode is uh, it's run like a normal, so it's it's will really applied every time. So when you press two note, okay, on a monophonic instrument, then the portamento will always apply. The next setting is with the legato. It's only will applied if you play in legato. So let me show you the differences. So no, no two parallel note we press down. Okay, so you hear it. Even if I'm not holding down the two note together, the portamento mode will create this transfer between the two notes. So let us to see what's going on with the frequencies. Okay, so this is the time period and you can see the uh, pitch changes, okay, it's it's rising. I will switch this uh, legato mode on. So what does this mean? The portamento will not apply on your notes if you are not playing in legato mode. You understand? So no, I'm playing on normal, so not in legato, so I'm not holding down one note, okay? And I'm not pressing the second note parallelly with the first one. Now I will play in legato. And let me show you guys what's going on with the frequencies, okay? So this one here, this section here, is the normal play, but here we played in legato with portamento, and now you can see the frequency is continuously changing to the next note, but here is not a case, so it is jumping. So the legato and the portamento mode together will give you almost uh, four multiply three, see, uh, almost 12, at least 12 different kind of playing style with a monophonic uh, instrument, synthesizer, whatever. Take your time and check this legato and portamento settings, okay? The next one here is the time or rate. The time is a fixed time period, so it doesn't matter uh, the, the tempo of your song, doesn't matter how fastly you play, the portamento time between the two pressed notes will always the same period of time. If you switch this one to rate, then the portamento engine in your synthesizer will follow the tempo changes in your sequence, okay? Which is really, really important in our world of Roland MC909. Because we have here this, okay? <laughs> I hope everybody can understand what's the difference between the two, okay? Um, 
I highly recommend you to switch this uh, to rate immediately if you have a really uh, strict uh, baseline which is running together with your music of course and with your tempo of course so then switch this to to rate the next one is about uh, it note or pitch hmm w w what this mean So the portamento engine always will try to reach the next note and then when you press the, the third note it will try to reach the next note. So this is like uh, when you drive your car, of course when you turn your wheel to left the car will follow uh, to the left, if you turn to the right the car will follow to the right. <laughs> note what we pressed here you can see the portamento engine is just following the instructions okay so let's change now this one to note and the difference will be huge I hope you realize what is the big difference. So let me show you in a spectrogram. So here you can clearly see what's going on now. Now the portamento engine is try to follow the changes, but if uh, the, the changes is not running out with the time period what you just set uh, here in a portamento time, okay, then the portamento engine will drop this transition and immediately will switch to the new note. Altogether, this uh, one, two, three, four, five settings plus these two in a legato mode, it will give you a lot of tons of options how you can play with your monophonic uh, synthesizer. Spend a bit of time here, okay? Because all kind of electronic music, hip hop, I don't know, EDM, pop, uh, house, techno, whatever, it's full, full with monophonic uh, uh, synthesizer uh, sounds. Okay, bass, lead synthesizer, whatever. With different kind of portamento and legato settings, you can play 20 different style uh -huh, with, with the same instrument. Okay, the next one is the unison. <laughs> this is a really lovely feature. You can see this waveform actually at the moment it's really simple. So now I will change the level of the unison mode, let's say up to 12 and we will analyze the, how the frequencies are changed with the unison mode and also how the waveform itself is changed and what this unison mode is doing with, with the waveform. So, record. So what we can see here now, it's kind of uh, amplitude and frequency modulation together. So what caused this? How we came from this one, okay, to this one. The synth engine will start the same waveforms on different frequencies but just with the slide it changes. But this can cause a really weird uh, frequency and amplitude of modul modulation. So let's now check the waveform itself. So this is our clean. So let's go now to the modulated unison and voila! It's still the same instrument, it's still the same waveform, but because we are running uh, two or three or four unison oscillator together in a really close frequency ranges and here we can see clearly so one oscillator, two oscillator, three oscillator and then we get it back at the period or maybe you know what this is the fourth one maybe they are almost in phase but because they have these uh, really small differences then of course they start to modulate each other. As you can see on the beginning, this is our clean voice and this is with unison. And maybe you can see, but this one, it's a much more narrower, much more defined, okay? 
frequencies. Meanwhile, in the unison sound, you see these patches, you see these modulations here in the frequencies and in the filtering, and the main frequency is not anymore this clean, really narrow line. So this is what the unison mode is doing with your waveform. And this is true not only on a Roland MC909, it's true on many, many, many other synthesizers. But don't forget, the unison mode will eat up a part of your polyphony. You know what, let's now drop a real-life kind of instrument into this uh, Unison washing machine, <laughs> okay, and then we will see what's going on. Uh, if we choose, uh, let's say, a uh, organ, a normal organ, it has some kind of percussion on the beginning. Okay, and now I will add this crazy unison mode in monophonic mode, so unison let's say unison on 10 yeah <laughs> let me change this one back to the middle okay so less unison operator and switch off the filter we start to arrive to this horrific space horror something now oh okay add a bit modulation Okay, and then now add this filter, again, tune up to the top. I hope you get the picture. This is only a simplest uh, organ sound, okay, with some kind of unison mode, in monophonic mode with a bit of filtering and with a bit of uh, modulation in somewhere in the LFO, I don't know what. Huh? You like it? You know what? Let me drop on it a bit of uh, reverb and in MFX1 I will choose Space Delay. I hope you guys get a picture how much fun you can find inside only in a general tub, yeah? In the synth editor of the Roland MC909. <laughs> so this was the first episode about the Roland MC909 editor software and about the Roland MC909 synth engine. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.